Okay. So today is Python and machine learning with scikit learn. Today we will just deal with some real data set. So real life data set. So we'll see how to explore a real data set with Panda data frame or Panda package. And we'll also learn some of the machine learning techniques with scikit learn. So today's class, I have three files. So SDLT time, IPython notebook. Uh, SDLT time, SQLarm, IPython notebook, this one. We'll use Titanic dataset and uh, SDLT pandas, IPython notebook. So all of these in located in GitHub, uh, sorry, Bitbucket, and also in the Python class, Google directory. So if you can download it and start IPython, so we can begin. So mm -hmm. first for like, what is Panda does or what does it do? So, in like, if you want to read a CSV in R, it's just like straight command, read CSV and it does everything. But Python, it's not that straightforward. And if you look into Python data frame structure, it's not that much handy. But R is really like straightforward and you can use those things. So, data, Panda data frame, like, it helps us to analyze those things. And like it's really straightforward and more much more like <coughs> so today we will use panda and numpy and so these are the import command so this will import panda and it's like writing a full panda is not useful so I am using acronym as PD it's like uh, PD is like everyone knows in Python PD is transfer and NumPy stand uh, NP and the accurately inline it helps us to like plot within the IPython notebook and so, so if we have everything we just run this one so, and you have to change this command like where mm -hmm. your Titanic data set is located so if you have this thing, just run this thing and you'll have it. So data.head, what does it do? It just does like our, our data. And IPython uses the forward slash for directory. Mm -hmm. So just like any Linux. Mm -hmm. So data head, it gives you like a first five column of the data, five rows of the data and shows all the data, like what's the thing. And you can change it like you, you, you just say like I don't need to see all the five, so I can see only three. So you just change three, and then you can see only three. And similarly, data frame tape is like show the last five rows of the data. So here this is like a five mm -hmm. Titanic data set. So in the first column is like passenger ID, then second column is survived. So zero means like this passenger didn't survive, one means like this passenger did survive. And then this is passenger class, name of the passenger, sex of the passenger, and the age. And is, this is like if the passenger has any sibling, siblings in the Titanic, and where it is purchased, ticket number, fare, cabin location, and where it's import. So S stands for Southampton, C, I forgot. <laughs> so, but this is like a very popular data set. You can just Google it and you can find out everything. So, next, if you want to see the row number or the index, just type data.index. It will give you the, all the row numbers of the index. So, if you want to see the summary of the data, so now we have like all data is a mixture of like okay, character values and the uh, numeric values. So you want to see the summary statistics of the data. So that command is like data dot describe. So if you just do data dot describe, it will give you the statistics. So you can see like passenger ID, there is like eight hundred and ninety one passenger ID, and in the survey there is like eight hundred and ninety one survey data not 891 survey and p class it has also 891 but in the h section there is like 7 
cell importance. So in each section, there's like number of data is missing. You can see the rest of them is also like two. So you can see like there's a number of missing. And data are described. So in the summary statistic, it only shows the numeric value. So it is not showing anything about the like what is the sex distribution or the pair, uh, caging or number. So it only shows you the summary of the numeric values. It's also in the, in the Google Drive. So you take any kind of data. Yeah, for the first cell on the notebook, it has the full tab from there. Uh, yeah, so that's for my laptop, so we have to change it. So so if the data is in your like Yeah, for the uh, repository for tea time you could just delete the first part of that and just yeah, so get into the same directory as the notebook. So now we find out, okay, there is like missing values here in the age. So we want to see like what is the missing value statistics for different problem. So we just do like data is null. So data is null gives you like a true or false value. So true means like if there is a value, false means like there is any values. And we want to sum, mm, sum of these things for like all different columns. So in passenger ID, there is like no any values. So in the passenger ID, there is no inner values. In H column, there is a 177 values missing. And in the Kevin column, there is like 687 values are missing. And in Embark column, there is like two in values. So this gives you like a summary statistics, like what, how you have to handle those things. So now like, okay, we do a like data exploration. So we have to see like, uh, as distribution of the survival and so just do a like data survive value so just it does like um, it goes to the data and the survive column and like count the how many survive values is there so if we look into survive column here it has zero and one zero for like it didn't survive one is for survive and like this command data survive dot value counts, it counts like how many zeros are there, how many ones is there. And like, and then it do a plot, and plot will be like bar plot, and this is the thing, and plot title would be distribution of survival, one is survive. Is the function data dot survive dot value counts part of pandas? Yeah. Or just? This is part of pandas. So, so you don't have to do pd first? No, like data is already panda data frame, so it identifies like a so part of panda. So just enter it and it just gives you the. So in panda, you can like access the particular column using dot or some other way. I'll show you. So, so this is one bar plot. You can do a scatter plot or something like that. Same thing. So plot is scatter data survive versus data age. So just like this, survival by age. Mm -hmm. So you can also do like how, uh, how many, like the class distribution of how survived. So just like this. So see the bar plot here, it's different from the bar plot here. So this is a bar plot vertical, and this one is a horizontal. And the only thing you have to change is here, like kind or type. So if you do change, remove the H, it will be horizontal. If you put the H, it will. So this is like simple <laughs> graphics mm -hmm. things. So next, we look into some of the panda functions like 
how to subset a column or something. So let's subset the data frame. Like, okay, we want to see, we want to subset from H to N. So just to do that, so data index, so first is row, we want all the rows and column from H to N. H to N. So just do that and it will just de-describe, it will show us like what are the take column we have. So we just okay H siblings for children fair. So all the just okay. So all the so if you want just to the column H, so we can change it to just okay. Just the edge column, so we just type. Mm -hmm. So you can access a column like different ways. So parentheses, then quotation mark, then the column name, or you can use just like simple as it is. So, so if it is like this, H to part uh, end. So if you don't want like all those things, you want like okay, some particular, so from H to like purchase. So how can you do that? So for that one, here we go back. So this will give us the column between H and So now we want to add another column into this. So suppose like we want to add another column like fair. And so how can we do that? So we will introduce a new column name so called fair and increase. So you can see fair one is the new column. So sometimes like we need to transpose the data matrix. So transpose is very easy, just a comment like capital T. So now we do. So previously the data looks like this, now it looks like this. Just it transpose the column row. So what are the columns name name there is sort of like it goes to the row name. And the column number is uh, row number name becomes the like on the column names. Mm -hmm. So in the subsetting columns, like we saw, like it subsets between range, like from H to end, and or H to purchase. So we just like suppose we want to just like subset. Okay, we want to just passenger ID and the ticket. We don't want anything in between. So how can we do that? So is that where we use LOC or the location function? <coughs> so this will do. So okay, so we just want A and fair. We don't want anything else. So just make sure A and fair, nothing else. Just two columns. Mm -hmm. So if you want to drop or like delete any columns, so just use drop function. So like this one. So first you have to give the data frame name, then the drop function, then the column name, and the axis. So in the axis in the Python, zero means like row, one means column. Yeah. So this means like you want to drop the number one. Number one that means column. So so this is like age and fair. So we want to drop the So previously we showed like this data set suffers from a lot of <coughs> NA values. So how to drop the NA? It's like a very easy function, drop NA. So if you just 
do a drop in it, it will drop everything. So all the rows consist uh, in your values. So if we just do that one, we can see like previously there were like 891 data values. So if you just drop those things, so data set becomes like 183 rows. So you have to do something. So you can do also some other stuff. So like if you you want to don't you don't want to delete those in a rows. Yeah. D does pandas like data frames in R, where we always put predictors and responses as columns and observations as rows, does it use the same perspective? Yeah. Okay. So, you don't want to lose all this data, so you can do something like, okay, fill those n values with something. So, sometimes like we use as like minus one. So, any of these values cannot be negative. So, if you put something in minus, so we know okay, something minus is. So you can use data field dot na. That means like all those na values with field with minus one. You can put anything else also. So just use that one. Then you can see now everything is like eight ninety one. You can age column just say eight ninety one. So there is also some other useful things like margin data frame. And Panda has like a very good or uh, very good functions. So let's define some of the data frame here. So like df panda data frame. So first column name is E and it has like value A and B. Second column name is like L value or left value one and two. Then I define a second data frame. So if you want to introduce a data frame, it's like PD data frame. It also has a like a column frame, column name called E. A and B and the right values four and five. So just example like how our data frame looks like. Just two rows and two columns. Very simple data frame. So we want to merge these two data frames. So simple thing. We want to introduce a third data frame, DF3, which will merge DF1 and 2. So just we will use PD dot march df1 and 2 and on key. So how it will merge? It will like it will seek the commonality between the keys. So in DF1 and 2 we have the common keys. So it will use common key A and B and just add another column. Okay. So very simple thing. And if you don't want to like this, merge like this, so just use DF append. So it will do something like this. How to merge? Two data frames with different columns. So you want to merge, like, for example, one column here, another column here. And then just uh, let's see like this. No. So then you have just tags or something, or like content. So this is data frame one, data frame